Hey everyone, my name is Matt Ackerson. I'm the CEO of Autogrow.co, as you may already know. And I'm joined by two other people who you may already know if you've been following along on our journey. Uh, Alex, who is our copywriter and also one of our content writers, and Mariana, who is our quality insurance specialist and also one of our writers. All right, so today we are talking about our sales funnel template article. We have uh, we, we're calling it the ultimate uh, sales funnel template. We're giving you two versions of a sales funnel template. Uh, one is basic and one is a bit more advanced. So one is, you know, if you're a beginner, uh, this is the sales funnel template that, that you want to go for. And I'll share my screen here in a second. Um, and with the advanced version, as you'll see, it's more complex. Uh, you want to work your way up to that. So why would you want a sales funnel template in the first place? Well, basically you need to, it's going to help you eliminate guesswork. All right. It's going to help you to get something up and running that's proven to work faster than if you had to think through and kind of obsess as sometimes we all do with, Oh, like I, I just, I just want to do it right. You know, someone show me how to do it right. So I don't have to guess and there's less a chance of uh, me doing something wrong because this is, maybe this is all brand new to you, all right? So whether you're a beginner or you're more advanced, we got some great uh, content to go over here in the next few minutes. So, uh, Alex, was there anything that stood out to you uh, as I go ahead and share my screen here um, that you think most stood out to you in terms of because I, I put together the templates and then, you know, we both collaborated on, on writing, you know, this resource. Um, anything that stood out to you as far as, you know, tactics and how it's, how the basic, this, we'll call it the beginner uh, sales funnel template here is, is organized or anything with your research in the article? Yeah. So I think like the simple one, it really like, it calls attention to the elements that need to be in there for any viable funnel. So like uh, you start with the traffic that's over on the left and then you get to the core pages and then you keep people from dropping out with, uh, with email nurturing sequences and retargeting ads. Um, so I, I guess this one just kind of points out the things that you need to have in a funnel for it to work. Mm -hmm. That's the way I thought of it anyway. Yep. Yeah. And what I want people to look at this diagram and we give you it as a PDF too, if you want to download it, if you're watching this on YouTube, the link is below in the description. You can go download it as a PDF too. What I want you to take away from this diagram, Alex, as you pointed out, was every step is an opportunity for people to drop out of the funnel. And the idea of a sales funnel that is complete and that is put together is that it's not just about the web pages. The web pages are, are the body, they're the core, they're the grounding, they're the foundation uh, for a sales funnel. But you need the follow-up aspect. And of course, you need the fuel aspects, you know, three Fs, foundation, follow-up, and fuel of, of any funnel, foundation, follow-up, fuel. Um, foundation being the website, the landing pages, uh, follow-up being the retargeting ads and those automated email sequences. Uh, or even you could classify under that too the exit pop-up and the fuel, of course, being uh, the traffic. So a lot of people, the majority of people, any type of funnel that you're going to build, they're going to fall out somewhere along the way, somewhere along the journey, unless your traffic is like, I don't know, pure gold in terms of wherever you're buying traffic from or email list, for example. Um, but people are going to fall out. And those people that have indicated some level of engagement of interest from clicking from one step to the next, uh, the follow-up is designed to, to bring them back, to nurture them, to come back and to proceed to the next step in, in the funnel. And the other thing that I think, uh, Alex and Mariana, that I think that, you know, has been, it was a mistake that, that we made in, in, in the past, you know, much earlier in, I guess you'd call it my career as a funnel strategist, entrepreneur, uh, you know, it's really easy to think that a funnel needs to be complicated, but it doesn't need 
to be complicated because you could start with something as simple as, and that's how we have it broken up here with, you, have, you see A's, you see B's, and you see C's, and you see numbers. So the priority with which you do everything in the funnel and the order in which you do it is important too. So for example, you know, our process at Autogrow, having launched hundreds and hundreds of sales funnels for clients uh, in the last 10 years that we've been in business, 10 years, uh, it, it, it matters. So for example, uh, your first phase in creating a funnel that converts is validation. You wanna validate, okay, does your lead magnet work? And you wanna, beyond that, just get your offer in front of people who are probably interested in it. So to do that, the bare minimum that you need, you need, okay, you need a lead magnet with a lead magnet landing page. You need a congrats uh, and confirm page. In other words, like a, a sales page, okay? to just put the offer like right there in front of people right after they opt in and you need ads or some other source of traffic to get people to that lead magnet page. And that's the bare minimum. And when you have that, that's when you should launch. Uh, so that's, that's the common mistake that, uh, that I see a lot of people making is the, you overthink it too many steps. And also you just wait too long to, to launch, you know, but you know, you, you want it to be more of an iterative process because it's, it's about learning and then amplifying, okay? And the amplification comes in, okay, A-B testing and in snapping into place these other follow-up um, aspects to it. New traffic sources, exit pop-up or targeting ads, email sequences, and so on. What do you think? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. And actually, what I was thinking was you're talking about amplifying it after you already have it in place. Um, so I actually talked about that with the next funnel that you provided. So like that would be in my mind, like the next step mm -hmm. after you have this basic one built out and you're getting consistent and high quality results, and then you want to increase the value of each customer, mm -hmm. then you start building out this second, more advanced one. Right. That's the way I framed it. Right. Great transition, by the way. Oh, Thank you. One, <laughs> one thing I just want to point out to people to drive home this point before we get into that more advanced uh, sales funnel template is, okay, just the A's are what comes first and that gets you from zero to launch or minimum viable funnel, MVF, minimum viable funnel. The B's are phase two and the C's are, you know, what you do last. And the numbers next to each of the letters, that's just the order in which we recommend uh, that you do it within. All right, so let's move on to that more advanced sales funnel template for the rest of this video. Okay, so uh, this is our ultimate sales funnel template. And uh, it's got some beautiful colors in it. Uh, but what does it all mean? It's, it looks a little complex. So long story short, Alex, as you were alluding to, uh, traffic comes in. You know, and, and let's and in, in this case, you know, we say traffic could be organic, you know, coming in through, for example, uh, the blog, you know, to so the website and then filtering on down. Um, so this the way that this diagram is organized is a little bit different. It's a little bit more high level strategic. It doesn't have every single individual component just uh, broken down exactly like the original. So I want you to keep that in mind as you look at it. So, for example, there's like a there's like a decision point here where after people have come in, they filtered on down, you know, through an exit pop-up, through the homepage, through the blog, are they gonna convert on some sort of free offer, on, on a lead magnet that, that you have? Um, you know, if not, okay, we can still bring them back with retargeting, maybe offer them some alternative lead magnet that they might be interested in. But if they do convert, okay, they move deeper into the funnel. And then we, for personalization purposes, we're going to survey people. And a lot of people, uh, we actually saw with our survey funnel that 40% of people who opted into our email list would fill out the survey. They'd answer two questions. And the way that you wanna structure a survey, well, first off, why do you wanna do, do a survey in the first place? Mariana, do you know you want, why you wanna do a survey in the first place? Mm, to segment the audience. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, and why do you wanna segment the audience? Uh, I guess to put them like in different buckets, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to know where to 
you know. Yeah, because send them. Right, right. Uh, personalization. Personalization means that it's uh, it's it's going to convert incrementally better. There's there's tons of research out there that shows that if you just personalize headlines and simple things like this, it can incrementally grow your conversion rate by 15% or, or more in many cases. So that's why you want to do something like a survey because it can personalize the journey, you know, in your funnel and in terms of the uh, email follow-up that you'll be sending to people, especially. Uh, and you want to structure the survey. You want to make it very, very them focused. So if you need a template for how that survey uh, should should work. You can Google we we Google for auto grow uh, survey funnel, and we have some examples online of that. But you want to keep it very uh, very you focused. In other words, the prospective customer or client focused. You want to say what is your biggest challenge, um, and who are you? So, what is your biggest challenge helps you to determine what sort of content you should give them. You know, to build goodwill, build a relationship. And who are you is kind of a dimension of persuasion because uh, if you can speak to people based on, you know, for example, are you an agency owner or are you a freelancer? Well, those are two entirely different um, career paths, I guess you could say, and, or industries. Uh, and, and there's different ways of speaking and different needs that come along with each of those uh, personas or identities. And so that is what can determine a, a big chunk of how you personalize these emails. Okay, so moving forward, we have personalized email, for example, number one, number two, number three, and that's based on the survey information. But a lot of people won't fill it out for whatever reason, they're busy, they don't wanna give personal information, so you still have your generic run-of-the-mill uh, email sequence that's, that's happening. Um, and within each of these emails, you know, based on people engaging, you may drop in you know, another email or another call to action for people to learn more about your product or service and include just a call to action, maybe in the PS for people to go and, and check it out. All right, but you always wanna be giving value first and then maybe in the PS tie that value that you've given. Oh, if you liked learning these tips about how to attract more uh, high ticket clients for your agency, then blah, 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 you might like you know, this special program, the special product that we have over here all about it. All right, so if they have bought, well then there's an opportunity to nurture them through an additional email sequence, check that they're engaged, and then upsell them to maximize the customer lifetime value. All right, and you can repeat that for as many times as product, products that you have and as long as the lead is still qualified and engaged and interested. All right. Um, and then, however, though, people are just going to fall out in many cases. So you need to be taking that into account too. And that's what this diamond uh, down here is saying is, okay, are people engaged? You know, if not, no, well, maybe we should give them a new lead magnet. Um, and, and, you know, this is something that I, I saw from working with other clients in the past where we would take an existing email list that was just kind of dormant and just create a new lead magnet to like kind of reactivate a big chunk of leads that otherwise were kind of dormant. And then from that lead magnet, then, okay, you re-engage them, you bring them back to, for example, um, uh, to, a, to an upsell sequence, or, you know, you bring them to uh, fill out the survey again, and then you give them some sort of an offer. All right, but it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Give value first, that's the principle. And then also maximize the visibility of the fact that, you know, you're, you have something to sell, you have something to offer that can solve a real problem for people. So I think that's all we got. Alex, anything else to add? Cool, no, I think you hit everything. All right, well, on that note, uh, I will say that with AutoGrow, uh, if you're interested in sales funnels, then you might be interested in AutoGrow and what AutoGrow can do for you. See what I did there? Uh, so we've got, um, with, with AutoGrow, uh, you can delegate all your digital marketing tasks without the high costs of hiring. And that's important, you know, especially, especially now in today's economic uh, client, uh, climate, uh, because we can save you tens of thousands of dollars. We can get work, digital marketing work done for you that you'd otherwise have to do for yourself. 
or pay someone else uh, a lot of money to do. And instead, you can put your ideas into Autogrow's, the Autogrow app, and then sit back, relax, and watch it come to life. And it's really that simple. So if you want to check that out, go to autogrow.co. Again, autogrow.co. And if you are more the do-it-yourself type, or maybe you're on a tighter budget, you may want to check out Autogrow's online uh, trainings and, and products and other resources that we have via autogrow.co forward slash products. All right. Thank you both. And thank you all for watching. See you in the next video.